So today's video is a beginner tutorial about the raw workflow inside DaVinci Resolve. And since September 2025 was loaded with a bunch of new cameras that can shoot raw internally, I think more and more want to take advantage of this. And if you a hardcore H.265 user and want to know what the workflow with RAW is, you're more than welcome to watch this video. Without further ado, let's get into DaVinci Resolve. Okay, we are now on the color page of DaVinci and as you can see, I haven't done anything so far. I just added a few clips. ProRes, because since September, uh, Blackmagic announced that we are now able to use ProRes RAW inside DaVinci without all the workaround of converting it into a Cinema DNG. Good job, Blackmagic. As you can see, I shot just random shots outside, low light. Uh, we do have neon lights here, daytime. And here you already see that it is a pretty warm shot. So you will see how you can change the color temperature with RAW files. And you also see that I recorded something in Nikon RAW because I'm shooting on the Z6 III and also the same clip in as a red file. Not to get confused, this is not a true red file. Mm. With Nikon RAW, you can now just change the ending of the file. So from .nef, uh, .nev, which is Nikon RAW, you just change it into R3D. .R3D. It just makes it possible to use the same pipeline, the IPP2. Plus you get the benefits of better blue and red tones. Nikon RAW files tend to clip your blues really quick. Just change it. It's quick and easy. The workflow. First thing you want to do after uploading all the footage, you go into your project settings. Here you see your color management. In this, you go to color science, you drop down menu, you choose DaVinci YRGB. Not YRGB color management, you can do this, but if you want to be in the driving seat and make the choices, you go for DaVinci YRGB. Timeline color management, DaVinci White Gamut. Since DaVinci 22.2, we as Mac users, we don't have to think about the gamma shift anymore. Before the, we had to choose uh, Rec 709A. And now we can use Rec 709C. It's just nice. <laughs> I just wanted to say that. And if you a long time DaVinci Resolve user, you've probably seen this camera raw page. And on this page, you can choose between multiple uh, raw files. This doesn't mean you choose the raw codec that you want to use on your timeline. This is how you want to handle each and every raw codec that is named. For example, here Blackmagic RAW, uh, you don't want to decode using camera metadata. Uh, you want everything to be in project. So this gives you the control over everything. You go into the DaVinci White Gamut and DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate. From now on, you don't have to transform your color space into DaVinci. It's just ready to go. Let's see, I am using Nikon RAW 2. My white balance, I want it as shot. Color space, Nikon is using REC 2020 and I am filming on Nikon Log. And the last one, red 10 bit is okay now because Nikon is always on 12 bit decoding using project IPP2. Uh, color space is wet white gamut RGB, gamma curve, log 3G10 and leave the rest like this. Just uncheck the apply metadata curves. Okay, then save it. And if you look at your left here on the color page, you see the camera raw. Let's say your clip is on metadata and you see it already, already changed the raw to log into HLG. You don't want that. So go back, drop down, click the clip and you're ready to go. Sometimes it stays on L HLG, just drop down menu, click and Nikon analog. And from here, you can now change the ISO just randomly, just to show you, and the color temperature. This is all you need to know for your raw settings inside DaVinci Resolve. And now we can go ahead and create our own node tree. First things first, we are now adding a node to our timeline. So this will affect 
each and every clip that you uploaded to DaVinci into your timeline. So drag and drop the color space transform. And remember, in our project settings, color management, we choose to um, color grade inside DaVinci YRGB and in white gamut intermediate. And if you go into this drop down menu, please don't scroll. Just click the drop down, press the D for DaVinci white gamut and enter. Drop down D DaVinci intermediate. And the output is R Rec 709. Enter. And for output gamma, we do want a gamma 2.4, not 2.2. You can choose between those two. So I am going for 2.4. And as you see, each and every clip has some sort of a grading. <laughs> but we just choose the output. Now, what we want to do is we go into our clip window and add a few notes. The first note in DaVinci when using raw footage is always noise reduction. Noise reduction will have an effect on your color grading. Next up is our CST in. Again, color space transform. So we do have Apple Pro as raw here and Apple is using Apple Log as our uh, input color space and input gamma. Apple Log. And now again, we choose DaVinci, my gamma, DaVinci Intermediate to transform it in our, into, our, into our color working space. Jesus. <laughs> now, don't go ahead and copy paste it because this will affect the camera raw data. And if I shut this, yeah, I shut this in, on I, uh, ISO 800. You see, if you copy paste it, it will change the whole uh, footage into ISO 6400. So you can go ahead. Uh, I think all of those are in 800. Yeah. So this you can copy and paste. All right. From here, you can now create an own node tree. To do this, this would be just too much for now. What I'm going to show you what's possible with Apple ProRes. You can now go ahead and change the color temperature, which makes it much easier for your grading process. Okay, so you see, we are already in a better, better beginning, a better start. <laughs> so yeah, I have so much light on in here. Yep, this looks much better than before. So and now let's see what the difference are between the Nikon RAW and the Red RAW files. We do choose our color space transform with red. We go ahead and choose our red white gamut and what is it? Red log three G ten and then Da Vinci and Da Vinci. Okay. So already you see the difference in this image. We go into our balance node and our HDR wheel and bring the exposure up to a level that will match the Nikon. All right, I think a little bit more. And then copy it to this one too. There are obvious differences in these files. Even though we didn't do anything different, just choose the color space transform node. And I will bring this up here. All right. So just keep just focus on the waveform from now for now. You will see the differences, right? Like, the colors, are, the red files are much more, much warmer. Let's change the color temperature. Okay. Bring it down to a level. Hmm. 
Okay, so let, let's just stay here. Uh. And in the red files, you see that you get the whole information that is coming through the lens. In this case, the 35 1.4. See, there's the co uh, correction, the distortion correction that is happening inside the uh, camera with the Nikon RAW files. But here, as soon as you convert it, you do get this barrel distortion, which is pretty cool if you want to add this, the anamorphic feeling, uh, anamorphic lenses or either barrel distortion or pin, uh, pin cushion distortion. Let's say uh, you want to play with like the bars on the top and the bottom of the uh, image. Let's go, let's go with 235. You see, you do get this, you know, this anamorphic look on the edges that you don't see here. I like all the information you see with raw files, but here you see you get this distortion. I just love it. So you see, this is it. There's not much difference to your H.265 footage that you are grading. You have much more control and more information, obviously, because the files are even bigger. And all you have to do is change your project settings, how you want to use um, the raw codecs inside da Vinci, and from there you can create your node tree, which we will do in another video. So we will grade these files and have a little bit of fun with them. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. On top of the morning, on top of the wave, on top of the team, on top of the day.